This is the What's Next podcast, Houston's number one platform where I invite creatives to share their journeys and give us a depiction of their visions. Most importantly, the last question I'll ask is, what's next? Episode number 80. With my dog. Let's go. Long time coming. For sure. We hit them. It's a fact. I remember when I used to rap. <laughs> Yo, I didn't even know that. I didn't know you used to rap. And I, and I would put your name in a verse. See, I've never heard this unreleased footage. <laughs> I need to hear the footage. <laughs> That's funny. Houston, Texas. Yo, remember when that one dude made that diss track about you? <laughs> you about to- <laughs> I told I told Pierre about that. Yo. I told Pierre about that. <laughs> I was thinking about that the other day. I was like, you really had to affect a guy like that or any any person period to make a diss track about you. A whole diss track, like I was talking to Pierre crazy. about that. The first time when me and Pierre met up, um, and we planned out the episode. Uh, after when we talked on that episode, episode sixty six, bloodshed, now planned on my website. Um, I told him about that, about that diss. But what did uh, he say? He was just like, I don't know. You know, Pierre is just Mister Cool, so he ain't going. He didn't want to just get in the in the rap beef like that, huh? <laughs> Y'all really had rap beef, like rap beef, like for real, like. Listen, man. Uh, I don't know. It was one of those things where, you know, uh, remember we had a meeting. Me and right. me and uh, him had a meeting at the apartment at the time, and he wanted me to manage him. Mm. And, and so what you say you didn't want to manage him. No, he he wanted me to manage him, and I I was like, okay. Before we met, I put down things that I wanted to talk about. He was like, well, yeah, I don't really need that. I need you to do this, 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 this. And I was like, man, it sounds like you got everything all. Together, why do you why do you want me to manage you if you got everything together? You're not trying to take none of my ideas, and I don't know. After that, it was just chaotic. After that, that's weird. So you told him no, you're not gonna manage him, and then he came back and dissed you, made a diss track about you. Yeah, I mean that really takes some thought to like really diss somebody in a in a record. I would have appreciated it if he had just kept it going, if he had just left it out. But he dissed me, and then. And then I found out about, this is when Twitter was popping back in the day in college. Right. And he, I found out about it. I listened to it one or two times and then he took it off. <laughs> I mean, this all stuff when, you know, we was back in college was young and stuff like that. Yeah. So, I yeah. mean, of course we're older now. I'm pretty sure he wouldn't do nothing like that. But at the time it was just funny. It was, it was all to hands. Even, to even think like if you had some type of situation with somebody to come back and make a diss record. Listen, I would. I mean, I would just laugh at it. Like, I, I laughed at it. it. I thought. It, I thought it was. I thought it was funny. Uh, you know, that's when I figured that I was. I was up and coming. You were doing something. That's, that's when I knew I was. I was ready. Uh, welcome back to episode number eighty of the West Next Podcast, a production of Still Visionary Inc. Uh, before we get started with the episode, let's introduce our social media handles so we don't disrupt the flow of the conversation when we get to that point. All right, so my uh, social media handle uh, on Instagram is Revel Realty Group, um, and that's R E V E L R E A L T Y G R P. So the group is shortened. So that's my um, my business page. It's where I do a lot of my business and stuff like that. You can catch me, um, you know, viewing properties, uh, that type of stuff. Me meeting with my, with my clients. Uh, and just me doing my day-to-day um, work in the realtor space or the, the real estate space, really. Um, and my personal handle is I want to be like Mike. Um, if that's, that's if you guys want to, you know, see what I have going on in my personal life. Um, so that's I want to be like Mike. Uh, two with the number two. And then B. Like I'm letter a, B. I'm all right. <laughs> I'm gonna write all that down so people can see. I know it's a, I know it's a lot to uh to kind of put out there, um, but just follow me on my revel, you know. Um, that's where the work is being done. That's where the work work is being done. That's <laughs> where you know I'm trying to you know hustle. You know that's where I'm trying to you know grow my business and stuff like that. So you guys check me out on uh on the revel page. Let me let, keep it like that. let me walk you through it. This is uh, and my name is John Ross Dyke the first, and you can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at John Ross Dyke, 
And still underscore visionary. If you would, connect with me on LinkedIn, subscribe to my YouTube channel, like my fan page on Facebook, and visit my website, <laughs> stillvisionary.com. In front of you, I have all my paraphernalia. You can shop stillvisionary.com slash apparel. Yeah. Pick you up a shirt. Please. You know? Support black business. You're doing big things over here, <laughs> you know. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Especially in this pandemic going on and stuff like that, you have, uh, you know, young entrepreneurs. I'm a, are we young? Yes. Okay. I am. I'll be, I'll be, uh, I'll be 31 years old in September. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I mean, look, we're young entrepreneurs, you know, yeah. out here trying to do our thing. So yeah. um, it's a great platform. You know, my, my, my brother over here is really doing big things, and I'm sitting back looking at it, really appreciating the things that he got going on. And it feels great to be to be on here, actually. Yeah, it's a long time overdue. Uh, listen, uh, long time overdue. Listen, um, when I was thinking about this episode, Mike, uh, this song came to mind about you. <laughs> Give me one second. Let me, right <laughs> Let me get it to the timestamp. Let me get it to the timestamp. Cause uh, let me get it to the timestamp. Cause I don't want no issues. Heart is like if nothing else in this world, that's how to survive. And when I'm against all odds, and when the odds against me, I travel wherever my Listen, man, I've always looked at you as a survivor. Yo, I don't know if people really know that song because I think I need I think you need to introduce them to what who who made the song, what's the title of the song, all that stuff. So the, let the, them know the, like the, what song you playing the, and why you playing it and how it relates to me. Because I want to know myself personally, listen. and I know the viewers want to know too. So go ahead and spill the beans. Listen, when I, when I was when I was preparing for this episode and I was thinking to myself, man, I'm finally I got finally got Mike on this on this podcast. To me, you have always struck me as a survivor. Being in college, I used to watch you hustle the way we used to hustle the thing. You used to hustle the things that uh. At uh, U of H, I'm not gonna put it out there because I don't need I don't need them to know exactly what it was. You used to hustle them sure. things at U of H. For sure. You hustled your way throughout college. You sure. always had bread in your pocket. You know what I'm saying? As we moved into the club scene, you was always hustling then. And so I always figured you and saw you as a survivor. So when I was thinking about where I wanted to go at the first joint of this of this podcast, it, it survivor just was the record for me that that I was thinking about when I was thinking about having you on here. So I just had to play Survivor. And right. that, that record is by Joe Budden. And I appreciate that, too. Um, you know, I've always tried to find a way, like, to, you know, keep money in my pocket and just do anything I had to do to really get the stuff I wanted. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah. that's what really was, I think, was the motivation at that time is, like, how am I going to buy, like, a new shirt or mm. new shoes to get mm. fly mm. and all that kind of stuff. Like, I didn't want to be in college, you know, my parents, they sent me money and stuff like that, but, I mean, that money, you can't really spend it yeah, on the stuff that you yeah, really want, you yeah, know? It so, ain't enough. You know, I was I always had that vision of, you know, how am I going to make enough money to buy the things that I want? So, yeah. I guess that's where it came from, and I guess that's why I'm, I'm a survivor, according to, yeah, yeah, for to sure. my brother right for here. Sure, so, for sure, for sure. You know, and I did, you know, I did a lot of different things, you know? I'm not nothing, nothing illegal, you know what I mean? <laughs> nothing illegal, but I've always like hustled, like, you know what I mean? So that's where it come from. So um, welcome to the podcast, man, first and foremost. Um, this is where I will go with it. Uh, what do you think people should take um, from our podcast today, your journey um, into starting Revel uh, Realty Group? What, what do you think people should take? I think what people should take out of this is um, – you know, always believe in yourself. And mm. I know that I know that sounds cliche, but I mean mm. it's true at the end of the day, you know? Mm. Because all the different ways that I've found to like really just like make a little bit of money or make money and stuff like that, it's always came from believing in myself. Mm. No matter if it's like, you know, graduating, getting a degree and then getting a job in the corporate world. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. That takes believing in yourself, you know. Um, like I said with the Rebel Realty thing. You know, uh, it actually came from my, my dad, mm. you know, like he always like put that in my head while I was, you know, working my corporate jobs and stuff like that. Like, hey, always find a way to have another source of income. Yeah. And so, you know, I listened to him and I was just listening, listening, not really making moves. And mm. then like later on, I decided to like, let's go. Let's go with this thing. Let's let's see where it can go. Yeah. Took my test and all that kind of stuff. Got my uh, got my license. Mm hmm. And then um, 
I was like, man, how am I going to put this thing together? So um, really, I just looked at like, hey, how can I brand myself? How can I make it seem like, um, you know, like I'm really doing something in this space at the, at the time when I was starting. Um, so, you know, I started up a uh, Revel Realty Group and I found a way to kind of like make this thing, make this thing bigger, you know, because you, you got to think big from the beginning. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I feel like if I would just came out and just branded myself alone, like me, Michael, you walk by realtor and that's it. You know, I, I, I don't think it would have been as big as it is. You know what I mean? You kind of have to make it make it bigger than what it is because you don't you don't know what's going to go on in the future. You don't know what avenues that you're going to, you know, approach. You don't know who you're going to meet and stuff like that. And so when you put yourself out there and you have a back end of business, people look at it like, okay, well this guy's really established. Let me do business with him. Yeah. And so that's how I looked at it. Speaking on on your pops, first of all, rest in peace to a legend. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. You remember that time we were living at a uh, Rest in peace to my baby boy, John Ross Dyke II. Rest in peace, rest in peace. Rest in you peace. remember that time we were living at uh, 5304 and your pops was down? <laughs> was the, your pops started doing something in, in in the daytime. I was like, yo, what is he doing? He was, what, you remember that? Oh, my God. Yeah, I man. remember it. Like, he, my dad. He he had me rolling, man. My dad is, uh, while he was here, he was real big in the church. Yeah. Real yeah. big in the church, especially like his, you know, his later days yeah. up until, you know, he, he passed. He was real big in the church. So what he would do, and he did the test the house too. Yeah. Like he would wake up early in the morning and just start like praying <laughs> super, super loud. You know what yeah. I'm saying? To where it's like, man, what is this guy? Like, what is this guy? Like, you would think like the world is about to end the way he was praying. <laughs> I swear. You know what I mean? So facts. <laughs> um, he was real heavy into prayer, and I remember that time he came to fifty three oh four. He was doing yeah. the same thing, and his I can understand coming from a standpoint of I've never seen this, and you know this is just my my homeboy's parents. You yeah. know it's normal to me, but yeah. you know you seeing it is a totally different thing. Yeah, yeah, that, and then when Phil's mom started cooking in the crib and stuff, I was like. Lord, right. my mom ain't doing none of that. I told my mom, don't come over here with that, man. But they people, man, were just, you know, lively people. Real right. Rest in peace to your pops, man. And yo, shout out to, look, shout out to, to Phil. Of course, of he course. Got his, his, his suits going on. Oh, yeah, and, you know, for he's, sure, uh, for sure, for he, sure. He makes his own custom suits, mm -hmm. and he's a, a, a stylist, too. That's mm -hmm. one of our brothers, too. We all yeah. stayed in 5304 together. And yeah, we for grew, years. We grew together, had for some real-life experiences together. <laughs> Uh, and you can check him out too. His his handle is is uh, what at uh, just feels right. Just feels right. Just feels right. And JPR Stalin. And, J and JPR Stalin. There you go. So, yeah, that's that's a brother to us too. But yeah, yeah. man, we like we we really went through some stuff. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Remember, I was sleeping on the air mattress and all that <laughs> other stuff back in the day too. Listen, in episode the, uh, episode uh, what was it? I think it was seventy five with Phil, uh, which is now playing on my website. Um, he is the roommate that I was referring to in our conversation when he was talking about Cosmo, brother. I was talking about this guy right here. This is the guy I lost a bet to and ended up sleeping on the bottom floor in that townhouse <laughs> at 5304. But uh, hey man, good this times. is my man. This is my man, man. Way, way, we go way, way back. But, um, okay, so uh, I want to also thank you, man, because uh, it was seeing you, seeing somebody tangible to me, uh, which made the real estate thing uh, real for me. And so uh, watching you go through it, watching you do it, I said to myself, man, if I'm going to hustle or find a hustle, or be able to hustle like I really want to hustle, I need something that's going to get me into that, into that space. And so um, thanks to your, your advice and, and your experiences, I passed the third real estate exam. Let's go. Yeah. Yesterday. Congratulations. The 14th. And so I got three more, and then I, and I'll be able to start making big boy bread. Oh yeah, for sure. That's yeah. coming down the way, man. You just gotta stick to, you know, stick to grinding, stick yeah. to doing what you what you need to do, really. You know. Yeah. You know, uh, going out there, finding clients and stuff like that, putting yourself out there. Yeah. You know, it's it, it's all work. You know what I mean? Like a lot of times, people don't look at like, so let's say for instance, like a simple Instagram post, mm -hmm. right? I want to post something as far as like, let's say I sold a house or something like that. I post that. That's that's part of work. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. you have to figure out, like, okay, how do I want to caption it? How do I want to put it out there? Does, you know, do I want to put a video out there? Do I want to put a picture out there? Mm -hmm. There's different factors that play into it. So, 
I'm real careful about like what I put on my page. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And that's mm-hmm. work within itself. Yeah. You know what I mean? So this stuff, it, it, it takes time, but if you do things the right way, you'll always get rewarded. Let me and ask that's you with anything. Let me ask you when you, when you at, based on your dad's advice and uh, you going into real estate, why do you think it was important for you to separately brand uh Revel Realty from your, I want to be like Mike page? Uh, I mean, I just saw it as a, as another Avenue really. Like, I felt like if I would have put it out there on my regular page, like mm-hmm. it wouldn't have been as receptive. You know what I mean? Because I feel like if it's a business, it needs to be its own entity. Mm. You know what I mean? Like you need to have, or not need to, but I looked at it as I need to have like everything separate. Bank, yeah. bank account included. Yeah. You know what I mean? And things like that. Just keep it separate. And so that's why I started the page. Yeah. Because I felt like if I start the page then people will be like, okay, well, he's really serious about this. This is really, this is really a thing because you see a lot of people post stuff on Instagram that they're doing this and they're doing that, Mm -hmm. you know? And then you look back like two, three months later and Mm -hmm. you don't see nothing, nothing else about that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So this gave me like a drive and motivation to where if I'm going to start my own page about this, Mm -hmm. then I have to be on it for real because people are looking, you know what I mean? And then, You know, people talk and stuff like that. They're like, oh, you know, what's going on with this? What's going on with that? You know what I mean? So it's a, it's a way to keep people updated on what you're doing. And at the same time, you know, bring them in to, to game business. Yeah. So that's that's where that came from. And that's where that thought and mindset came from. And it's paying off. I have way more followers on my Revel than I do on my personal. Yeah. yeah. So something's, something's working. Yeah. So talk to me about, uh, I have this segment called Creativity Comes From Experiences. Um, where I, I like I would like my creatives to detail those uh, nights and those and that in your mind state of how you put Revel Realty together. Why did you come up with that name? And then eventually, how did you create it? Oh man, that took a long time. Yeah. As far as like the naming stuff, and that's one thing I really got stuck on is the is the naming. You know what I mean? Like why? Why? Because you want to pick a name that that rings that that resonates in people's minds in that, you know, is when they say it off the tongue, it flows. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I, man, I spent a long, (laughs) a long time trying to figure out like, what's a good name for this and and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, I was just looking up different, you know know what I did? I was looking up synonyms for words and stuff like that. So I think what I looked up was like uh, joyous celebration, stuff Mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I looked up synonyms and I found, Revel. And I was like, man, Revel Realty. And I was like, man, that sounds, that sounds good. Mm-hmm. And so from there I looked up, okay, is there, has somebody already taken this name? Yeah. Is somebody using it. Yeah. And I seen something similar and I want to, I, I believe it was in like Connecticut. Okay. And it wasn't, ex, it wasn't exactly the same or nothing like that, but it was something similar or whatever where they had uh Revel or whatever. But, Anyways, I just took it and I grabbed it. I was like, look, this for me, you know? And um, I got the logo made from uh, our boy Cosmo. Killer Cos. <laughs> Check out Cosmo. Yeah. At Cosmo the Beast. Yeah, yeah. For your, uh, you know, for your graphic logos. designs, logos, yeah, and all no that doubt. kind of stuff. He's, no he's, a, great, he's a great person to, um, you know, with. to network with yeah. and, to, and to make your logo and all that kind of stuff. Like, yeah. he, he's, he's, he's cold with it. For sure. For so, sure. anyways, I took it to him and I was like, hey, you know, make me a logo. I sent them like some ideas and stuff like that. And that's how he built the logo. Um, and then from there, I was just like, oh, look, I'm good to go. Cause I know what to boast. Like, you know, um, I know what people, or I feel like I know what people like to see. You know what I mean? Like if you go on my page, it's not a whole bunch of like um, real estate, real estate, real estate, real estate. And that's it. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I like to give people like a personal personal side to me a little bit you yeah. know what I mean like yeah. you know just like stuff I think is cool you know what I mean and I post it like if I if you know I, if I have an outfit on or something like that that I think looks nice I'll post it yeah. you know yeah. and then see how they react your travels my travels yeah. all that kind of stuff you know yeah. and um, you know hopefully you enjoy it mm-hmm. so that's mm-hmm. where that come from okay so then now um, going into the group how, how do you think that um Revel Realty. Uh, So, okay, this is what I'm learning in real estate. And, and, you know, this is a learning podcast. So I look to, you know, I'm part of gyms to people that are listening and watching this podcast. So um, 
your license is under a broker. Right. Okay. So how do you go from, how do you not mix uh, what goes to the broker in terms of the cut and what goes to Revel Realty? I mean, going with the broker, you have to, um, you have to already have like, most of the time they already let you know like how much you're going to be paying. Yeah. Them. Okay. Or whatever. So there's always like a split. Mm -hmm. And uh, the broker I chose really, um, at first it came down to, you know, my, uh, somebody that, that's a mentor to me. Okay. Um, was, I'll put it out. His name is Acho. Okay. So he's been, you know, when I first started out, like I sat with them, talked to him and stuff like that. He gave me some like real pointers on, um, you know, how to move and mm -hmm. things I need to look out for. Yeah. Stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So he was under a broker himself, mm -hmm. but you know, he just sat his license on there. Like, you know what I mean? Just to have it on there. He was really, he had his hand in other, other big things. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I took his advice and I went to that broker. I got signed up with them and stuff like that. And, you know, the cut was favorable, favorable to me. Yeah. Um, but like, let's say for instance, you go to like a uh, Keller Williams or something like that. Yeah. They'll take more of a cut. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But my, my broker at the time, they weren't taking a, a big cut like that. But the flip side to it is you have to go out there and do everything yourself because they don't, they don't provide you with anything. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because you're just, you're just going out there and you have your license with them, but they're not providing any like marketing, like, um, or even like any real training mm -hmm. is not being provided by them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So yeah. you have to, and I was fortunate too, because on that aspect of like training and all that kind of stuff, like I have an uncle in Dallas, Martin, his name is Martin Honore. Yeah. It's my yeah. uncle. Yeah. Uh, my favorite uncle really. Um, and he's been in, uh, in the real estate in real estate for like 20 years. Right. Yeah. So he guided me a lot along the way, a lot. You know, anytime I have a question or anything like that, I can always call him and he'll tell me how to do stuff. Yeah. And I know a lot of people don't have that benefit. Yeah. And that was real valuable to me because I didn't know who to go to to ask questions. Yeah. Or I didn't know how to do certain things that, of course, he already knew because he's been in the game so long. Yeah. And so I would just always refer to him and he'll always give me information. He'll always pick up, you know, matter of fact, I talked to him yesterday. I talked to him yesterday and he, you know, he gave me a lead. Yeah. You know, he's, you know, he's been in the game so long so that, that, you know, he gets business from everywhere. He gave me a lead yesterday. So those, those two people were real instrumental in me building this thing or three, really my, my father at first. Cause mm -hmm. he, he's the one that gave me the idea. Facts. And then, uh, you know, Acho and then, um, your uncle, my uncle. Yeah. So, yeah, that's how that came about. No doubt. Yeah, so, okay, so, um, tell me what you think about this song right here. I love this song. Tell me what you think about this song. First of all, this one. My mom said to me, you know, sweetheart, one day you should settle down and marry a... <laughs> Houston, Texas, you already know what I came to do. Uh, my name is John Rose, Dr. First. This is my man, Big Mike, right here. Okay. <laughs> This record I'm playing is called Boss You Up. It's by my homegirl. Her name is Demaria. She's got a new album coming out. Y'all check it out. Okay. Listen, man, I support the local artists. As you, as we've said in this podcast, Cosmo, Phil, Mike, an artist. Support us all. We need the help, man. Black businesses, Black Lives Matter. Let's go. Heard about me, but it's hard to find me. I lay low with my team, plotting on a milli. See, I don't work for free. Pay me what you owe me. I won't show up for free. I only come for money. If you own it, then let me know. If you wanna show, send my fee before. I got what they asking for. Ask me for a quote. Yeah, I deserve it, baby. Don't try to short me, baby. That's interest on your pay. Yeah, that's yeah. my that's my that's my homegirl Demaria Daniels. Her record is "Boss You Up" off her new album "Femme Fatale." What you think about that, man? Yo, I'm not gonna lie. Look, she's on to something for real. Like, okay, that, okay, that, that beat when that beat dropped, hey, <laughs> my head started nodding. I ain't gonna lie, you saw it. But yeah, she's really on to something. Like, she got a uh, she got a bright future ahead of her. She should keep pushing, keep doing her thing. And then this one right here. Crack don't cook yourself, paper on request, stuff it in the book, tuck it on the shelf, let it marinate, and don't come back, but still you need it, even with
with a breathing treatment. Been a endless nigga breathing. Parmesan face cook with all that cheese and fuck up your season. Give it down on reason, easy, easy. Tobacco smoke in the fire, I can tell you won't none. Count no fun, safe, get the grass on the face. My wife's gone home to the one, I'm home to the one. Always stay in Phoenix, I live on the sun. If I tell Off the G14 album. Been had dog looking for a side piece, like where's my gun? Big smoke, politic and bigger heist with the Kim folk. They already know how the shit go. The bird is in curse of the brim low. The plan is in motion. The hands of a fist, ten foes, and the Chevy on my dip low. We come around like the wind blow. Tenant on the ops. Chino on the wheel. How the summer on the ox. Easy on the can. Rocks in the cut. Juice fucking with the shots. AZ on the map. Big slaps on the pop. Boys hate these days. Can't let a nigga knock. Gotta pull strings when you try to get a knot. I ain't worried about a drop. Nights on the climb when you headed for the lot. Sports in the top ten plays. 25 8. Mr. Going in the bag every day. Play a pad, more space. Play a play me in your ear, more taste. Hitting for the Shot, no chase. Trump mm. full of bass like you. We call Frank and said, Big brother, fuck him. Let's ball and parlay every day. It's a wave, my nigga. Mm. Yo, who is that? Trey Rogers. Yo, I play. <laughs> I went hard. I, I'm I tell, not gonna lie. Listen, I'm telling y'all, man. I, look, I, I'm telling you, this kid can rap, man. He can rap for and real. So, and so, and listen, to see his maturation in it, right? It, you know, him and, and how good he's gotten at it, it shows me that anything is possible if you put your mind to it. You know what I'm saying? One hundred percent. And when 100%. and when when we first talked, man, you know he he had dropped the marathon record, and I was like, okay, cool. And then he dropped the uh, um, the vaulted ceilings project, and I was like, okay, he's on to some. And and I remember dissecting it like remember that talent show we did back in the day. I was dissecting it like that, trying to figure out how I could promote it, talk about it and stuff. And then he dropped the G fourteen. Listen, me and my man Mike, we didn't been through it all. Uh, but a listen. whole lot. <laughs> hey, listen. did you tell him how we met? <laughs> Go ahead. All right, I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna tell everybody how we met. He gonna tell you how we met, and All then right. I'm gonna tell you how we almost fell off. Go ahead. All right. So <laughs> I came. I came to U of H. Right. I transferred from my other school in Oklahoma. Came to U of H, and uh, you know I was just getting to meet people and stuff like oh that. Oh my god. I met Phil. I met Phil first. Yeah, I met Phil first. Cause y'all um, knew each other from back home. Cause we knew each other from Dallas. Then um, the way we met was I went to the rec center. Or whatever. <laughs> and I wasn't even going... Like, everybody was hooping. Everybody went to the rec center to go hoop at certain times and stuff like that. And I'm not no hooper. You know what I mean? So, I was just going just to kick it. <laughs> right? And, um, I, you know, I cut, hair at, I cut hair at my school before. And that's what I wanted to establish, yeah. you know, when I got to U of H. Trying to talk to guys and tell them, like, hey, I cut hair. Come to me and stuff like that. <laughs> and uh, I seen this guy on the court just like running around. I, you know what I'm nah, saying? don't say running around. I was hooping, <laughs> dunking on boys, looking like Dwayne Wade yo, out there. Stop playing, yo, 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 kid. Yo, yo, don't listen, play with me, kid. Listen, I seen this guy running around or whatever, and you know, looking like Urkel, really. You know what I'm saying? That's what I take the glasses. that. I take that because on the West, boys know me as two. Go ahead, go ahead. But listen, though, no, people people used to call you the gangster Urkel. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I yeah. seen this guy looking like Urkel, but he was like playing hard or whatever. So long story short or whatever. <laughs> after the game, I went to him and I talked to him. I was like, hey, hey, man, you know, I cut hair. Cause I, cause I noticed, you know, his hair was looking kind of out of whack. You know what I'm saying? And I know, I know how it is in college. You don't have a lot of money. You don't have for transportation, sure. so oh it's hard God. for people to get their hair done and stuff like that. So yeah, I yeah. approached him and I was like, "Hey, man, you know what I'm saying? Like, I cut hair. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's okay. You can come to me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Get that up, get that up off your head. But I think at the time, you was being rebellious to your pops, yeah, right? Because yeah. your pops wanted you to cut your hair. And I was like, "Yo, your pops is right." Listen. <laughs> So from there on out, you know what I mean? Cut his hair. Uh, we got to talking. We got in cool. And, and yeah. you know, look at it now. Like, yeah. we're brothers. Like, yeah. this, we've been brothers for how long now? Like, Damn over near. decades. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, so we uh, we uh, go from that haircut to a friendship, to brotherhood. And then we move into 5304 from apartment 108 at the same apartment complex. Right. Now we ain't gonna talk about we ain't gonna put no we ain't put no names, especially when we talking about slander. We ain't put no names. But uh my man was talking yeah, to this girl. My man was talking to this girl back in the day, right? Who I didn't particularly care for. <laughs> oh, he's going on record. <laughs> I didn't put, listen, I listen, I tried to. I'm not a, a a malicious person. I tried to find favor in this female. Just could not. Every time, like, I felt like we were cool, she would shit on me, right? 
and I was waiting for my chance to shit on her. And it came one day in the form of a knock on the door. Do, 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 do. I was like, who is this? So at the townhouse, we had, you know, there was a door right here, a wall, and then there was a little window right by the fridge inside the kitchen. So I peek, I popped up, I pulled the, the little paper blinds down. I look at it and she sees me in the eye. I move my finger, it closes, and I go right to my room. I wasn't opening that goddamn door, but it almost messed up my relationship and my my my, my brotherhood, my my friendship with with my man. So for nah, that, not at all, man. It wasn't gonna mess up nothing, man. I was boy. just I was just upset at the time. Yeah. That's it. Like boy. if you boy. know me, if you know me personally, like if you like if I'm mad mad at you, I'll voice it. You know what I'm saying? But as far as like holding a grudge or sitting uh, sitting up there being mad and all that other stuff, like I don't have time for that. Like yeah, I get out, I get it off my chest. And that's the way I feel at the moment. Yeah. And then we can talk later or whatever. Mm-hmm. And that and that's it. You yeah. know what I mean? I don't hold yeah. on to things. Yeah. So um, this guy uh, right here on my right hand side. I don't know anybody who's more musically inclined in terms of the volume of music hey, that them that, know. that uh that that he listens to. I don't know anybody besides him and maybe Cosmo in my immediate Cosmo, circle. Yeah, Cosmo, Cosmo. In my immediate circle, maybe Todd in my immediate circle, right? Well, okay, Cosmo and Mike, they listen to more music and more variety of music than I do. What song's on your mind right now? Uh, what song is on my mind? Mhm. I mean, I would say this, be honest, like I listen to everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Whether yeah. it's new, whether it's old school, even R and B, like I, yeah. I like I go deep into R and B too. But I mean, what I've been really listening to and jamming to, you'll be surprised, is NLE Chopper. Okay, <laughs> I've heard him. I've well, heard it, him. It's it's called Walk 'Em Down. Okay, I believe it. Yeah, Walk 'Em Down. Okay. Um, Roddy Rich is on it, but I really like that song. Like okay. I really do like that song. Like I play it. I, look, I just started really listening to it probably like two days ago. Okay. But I mean, my music like. That I listen to ranges from everybody, like you know what I mean, like yeah. Jay, of course, yeah, Nas, like, and of I'm course. never, I'm never biased on yeah. on, on artists. I just listen to who, whoever I think like makes good songs, or if they make a good song, no matter how who it is, mm-hmm. if I like it, I like it. Yeah, yeah, and of course for me, the greatest rapper alive. Uh, Rhythm and blues, pop rock, soul to jazz, to my toes attack. Uh, how I look being told, I'm not supposed to. Play. This guy right here, Nas. I'm listening to Ultra Black by Nas. Favorite favorite rapper of all time. Let's yeah. rap a lot. Talking about he left the hospital to fire like me. <laughs> <laughs> I already know where you're going. <laughs> <laughs> but no, also, oh. like, for real, for real, I remember the day Tupac died. Mm. Like, I remember that vividly. I mm. remember it was, I was playing football at the time. I don't want to even tell my age, but I don't care. It was seventh grade. I was in seventh grade. Mm. And, um, I had football practice. We had early morning football practices. And, you know, like, I'm talking about, like, 6 a.m. Mm. I came in the locker room, and everybody was just talking about, man, Tupac died, Tupac died, this, this, and mm. that. And I didn't think it was true at first. Mm. It wasn't until we got out of practice that it, it solidified in my mind that this is real. Yeah, I don't know where I was in 96. September 96, I don't know where I was. I was in high school at, I was at in Barnett high- Junior High. You weren't, that's not 96? No, you junior high. You say okay, yeah. yeah I was, I was, I was, I was in junior high too. Ninety six, yeah. I was going on twelve that year when Tupac died. I was, I was a few days away from being twelve because he died on the thirteenth of September. Yeah, it was closer to the end of the year. Yeah, you know, it was, it was what the ninety six, <clears throat> ninety seven school year. Yeah, yeah. And um, you know, they dropped the, the beginning of the year, like beginning of the year, not September, beginning of the year. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, whatever. I just remember yeah. I was in the locker room. Dudes told me like what happened, and yeah. man, I was I was, man, I was down. Yeah, for real. Like, cause I mean, I'm I listen to a whole lot of music, and I really follow like like music is one of the things that I really mm. listen to a whole. I mm. listen to music a whole lot, and it, I think it stems from my dad really, mm-hmm. cause my dad was real heavy on music. Like every Saturday morning, like he would play like Bob Marley and stuff like that, mm. and play Luther Vandross. He even had Tupac. You know, yeah. he had a whole range of different music. Michael Jackson, he had all them old records and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Like Thriller, he had like the actual record yeah. on wax. Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, so he was just listening. He listened to music like all the time, especially on Saturday. And I think that's where I really picked it up from. Saturday mornings, yeah. listening to music and stuff like that. And just like, 
And it stemmed from that. Like, if you, it, my siblings as well, you know yeah. what I mean? Shout out to my siblings. Yeah. Cliff, Cliff. Cliff. Is, yeah. Cliff, Joy, Justin. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, they listen to a whole lot of music too, you know? Okay. But I don't think they listen to music like I listen to music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But they, hey, they're quick to put me on music too that they hear that they like, they'll send it to me. So, yeah. and I listen to it. Like I said, the only person in my immediate circle that I know that might listen to more of a variety than I do. Is you. So that's why it's I had to ask you that question. Okay, so um you've you've become a realtor, licensed in Texas. You um start Revel Realty. Now, you know, the other day, um you launched your website. Okay. Facts. Walk us walk us walk us through uh walk us through that concept of uh launching a website and why it was why it was imperative for the time period to have a website for your real Revel Realty group. I mean, the website has always been a thing. I always thought about doing the website. Um, it actually, at the beginning, when I first started, I already knew I was going to make a website. If you look at my business cards, which I have printed out from when I first started, it has the, uh, the, the web address on the business card, but it was just empty. So I was like, you know, with this time, in the, uh, with going through the pandemic and all this other stuff, you know, it just it gives people a whole lot more time to do stuff. And that's always been one of the things that I wanted to do. And, and it's been on my checklist for a minute. And, um, you know, I just, you know, matter of fact, talking to, uh, to Phil really gave me, you know, the direction of where I want to go to, uh, to actually build it out. And so once I, you know, once I got that in, in mind and I already knew where, what I was going to do and how I was going to, you know, lay it out. Yeah. You know, it took a little while to kind of like design it and stuff like that. Cause I did everything on my own, but I only did everything on my own to, um, be able to change up stuff if I want to, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So uh, that was a big thing for me. So, yeah, you know, I took took it on myself, built it out, you know, and I think it serves uh, a great purpose for me, a good purpose for me because, you know, it's a way of putting myself back out there. Yeah. To people just to remind them, like, hey, you know, this is what I do. Um, mm-hmm. And if you're looking to do business, you know, uh, contact me. We can, we can, we can talk. Yeah. Um, people always ask for a website, too. Right. People always ask for a website. And another thing, too, is, um, you know, just a way to, like, document, like, everything that I've done in the real estate space, too. I looked at it, too. It's kind of like um, not necessarily a, a, a diary, but it's kind of like a, um, what would we call it? Like a journal, maybe? Mm-hmm. Something like that to where I can, like, document everything that I'm doing mm-hmm. and put it out there for people to see. What's the website? It's uh, RevelRealtyGRP.com. Revel Realty. www.revelrealty. R E A L. R E V E L. Okay. G R P dot com. Okay. And so, um, yeah, I just built it out to gain more exposure and then to let people know what I'm doing. People that are unfamiliar with me and stuff like that, they can find a way to um, see what I'm doing. Um, and then it also helps me out too, in a sense, to where if somebody is interested in buying a home, yeah. Or looking for an apartment or investment property, they can go on my website. They can contact me through that way. They can tell me specifically what they're looking for. Yeah, and um, I can take note of it, and then we can go out and we can go uh, find what you're looking for. We can make your dream come true. I just built. I just bookmarked it. I just there bookmarked go. the website. Yeah. So those couple things really <clears> gave <throat> me the sense of hey, let me go ahead and build this thing out while I have you know, real time. And then I took a step back too, as well, as far as like, I was like, let me take a step back. Let me f- figure out a way to market myself. Um, and let's see where it goes. I've never really just marketed myself the, the, the way that I feel like I should have. And uh, I mean, another person that helped me market it, market myself um, with this whole rollout with the website and all this stuff has been my, my brother Mikos. Mm. Like he, uh, he is shout out to him. Yeah. He's real heavy in, in the marketing. Yeah. Yeah. With your business, you're looking to start up a business, you need marketing, you know, contact him. He's uh I am Mikos mm-hmm. on Instagram. Mm-hmm. And you shoot him a um, you know, you, you contact him and stuff like that, he'll he'll really like help you out as far as like putting yourself out there. I think putting the, your business out there. I think the thing that really um solidified your influence in my um personal and professional endeavors was the fact of you saying so when I went through a whole rebranding thing from visionary movements to still visionary, 
right? I had learned how to work the WordPress, right? So, so that I, I learned how to put everything now, writing the codes in the website I didn't know how to do. But um, starting all over, I didn't have the funds that I needed to just go out and hit Cosmo and be like, I need a new website. So, I, of course, I went to Fiverr. But you mm-hmm. told me that you did it on your own. Why was it important for you to do it on your own? Uh, I mean, <clears throat> it's, on, it's, it's built through Squarespace, so everything is really, you know, more so laid out for you. But at the same time, you got to you have to know how you know how to do stuff. You know, how to, you have to know how to play stuff. And uh, and there's certain like codes and stuff like that that I put like custom codes, you know, just to have a different effect, make it look different that I had to like actually like look up and, mm. and research to um, to mm. even you know, put it on there and make it, make it possible. But yeah. what was your question? I forgot. Uh, Just why was it important for you to know how to physically or oh, uh, why manually was it do a yeah, do, yeah, you know, yeah. website? So why was it important? It was important because if I want to go back in there and change something, something, then I have the ability to do that. Or if I want to add something, I have the ability to do that. Like, or if let's say I put something out there, or I added something to the website that, you know, there's a mistake maybe on it or something like that. I can go back and change it. I don't have to call, you know, a web designer or yeah. whoever, you know, made the website for me to yeah. go back and change it. And that was a big thing for me because, I, I mean, I plan. I mean, I built this website, but I, I mean, I, I'm looking to build another one. You know what I mean for other stuff I got going on down the road. Yeah. So that was important for me to learn how to actually build the website myself. So um, later on in the future, I can build another one. You know what I mean? And, you know, just keep it keep it going. Yeah. I want to say um, with your Black Lives Matter shirt, I want to say rest in peace to George Floyd. George Floyd. I want to say rest in peace to Rashad Brooks. I want to say rest in so, peace to um, Breonna Taylor, Breonna Taylor, Elijah McCain. We're looking for justice for Breonna Taylor still. I want to say rest in peace to um, who else? Bo Kim. Bo Kim. Um, they were talking about him on the Joe Budden podcast. Bo Kim John. I want to say rest in peace to everybody who was murdered by the hands of police brutality. Eric Garner. Eric Garner. Uh, Emmett Till a long time ago. I want to say rest in peace to uh, Mike Brown. Mike Trayvon Brown. Martin. That's what I was trying to think of. Mike Brown. I want to say rest in peace to Sandra Bland. Um, say their name. And I also want to say, uh, moving into today, I want to say rest in peace to Nipsey Hussle. Today's his birthday. Hey, the 15th. Rest in peace. Rest in peace, man. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Nipsey Hustle, like yeah, yeah, like speak on it, speak on it. I've been listening to Nipsey for a while. I haven't, while. But, but I understand the hustle. Go ahead. <laughs> and it all, you know, it all stemmed from me, and I didn't even become a fan of his from music, really. Mm. You know, I was just seeing like the things he was talking about in, the, uh, yeah. you know, the black empowerment, and you know, really just making a change in your community and all mm. the things he stood for. I just, you know, I was, I was seeing that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, it just made me become a fan of his. Yeah. And then um, you know he started getting better musically, and I yeah. really started taking to take a uh, you know a tune to him and just really listening to his music. And yeah. I got even more, you know, uh, invested in what he was doing. Yeah. Um. So to see his whole situation, you know, unfold the way it did is it's real unfortunate. So yeah. I mean, rest in peace to to, to Nipsey Hussle for sure. Yeah. Well, I remember. I remember when we were talking at the old place you lived at, and you said that. Nipsey also used to have the realest interviews. To me, today, Mano strikes me as that type too that has those real, real conversations when he when he interviews. And right. so, um, I just wanted to highlight that. But today is August the fifteenth, uh, twenty twenty, and we have one hundred and forty days left in the year. What do you hope to attain in one hundred and forty days? All right. So, what I hope to obtain in one hundred forty days? For mm. one, I want to I want I want to be more active as far as like marketing myself. I want to find different ways to market myself. I want to figure out what works best for me when I'm marketing because, uh, I mean, I've been doing this for close to five years now. Okay. And like I said, I never really like invested enough like time into putting myself out there. Mm -hmm. Um, so I just want to see where it goes as far as like, if I really just really get a machine behind me and, and, and put myself out there, how far can I take this thing? Mm -hmm. And like I was telling you before, like we were in the car just talking and I was just saying like, whatever God has for me, I want all of it. That's a fact. I mean, that's a fact. That means, you know, to me, I look at it like God sees like the work that you're doing. So he knows if you're working as hard as you can, Mm -hmm. he knows if you're really sacrificing yourself Mm -hmm. to, to be successful. Cause, Mm -hmm. 
and then he'll you know he'll he'll make your blessings come true whatever whatever blessings that that are meant for you mm -hmm. will be for you yeah. you know but you got to put in that hard work i mean i look at this thing too is like you know in the future putting my family on yeah you know, putting my family on you know educating them and i want to see all of them you know be able to flourish and whatever yeah. it is you know but if i can help them if i can uh you know, find a way to incorporate them in what I'm doing. No doubt. Hey, I'm all for it. You know, I yeah. have some siblings that are, you know, really, really looking into real estate, considering it too. You know, they're asking me questions about, you know, just different things. And, you know, I give them all the information that, that I can, you know? Yeah. Hey, like if anybody that's in your family, close friends or whatever the case may be, if you can help them in any type of way, shoot, why not? You know what I mean? They're in your life for a reason. Yeah. And yeah. it's it's always better, you know, when everybody's successful, everybody's doing something, everybody has money in the pocket, we're all living good. That just makes life a whole lot more better. Yeah. You know, why not live life to the fullest? That's how I look at it. Yeah. In your existence, uh uh thirty some odd years, I ain't gonna put it out there, but thirty some odd years. I'm old. If you could define your yourself in one word, what would that word be? Oh man. And that's tough. But I feel like one word that can describe me, I feel like, is a chameleon. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Uh, I mean, if for everybody that knows, you already know, like, chameleon adapts to any environment they're, that they're in. You know what I mean? Whether it's just changing color or, you know, just the vibe and period. And I feel like I'm that same type of person. Like, I'll, to me, I always find a way to, like, make stuff, make stuff happen or get Facts. stuff done. Facts. And that's the way you got to live life for, Facts. For, you know, up until this point to, you know, where I'm at as far as age and stuff like that. I've always noticed with myself Facts. that I'll find a way to do something. And my dad always told me that, too, like when I was young, too. And um, I just took, you know, took that to heart and just whatever I do or whatever I think about doing, look, look, I do my research for it first and then I go for it. If it's if I feel like this is something that I would, you know, I want to do. Or if I feel like it's meant for me, then I do it. But at the same time, people have to realize everything's not for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Speak right. On Am I right? Speak on it. Yeah. Everything's I'm not down. for you. So like if you see somebody else doing this or doing that and you know they're doing they're doing great at it, it doesn't mean it's for you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you can go out there and, and try to do the same thing and not be successful. That's a fact. But that's not a bad thing though, because you're still figuring out who you are and what you need to be doing and what you're really skilled at. You know what I mean? So it takes, it takes some of that, like to really figure out yourself. And that's how I look at it. Like, it's not a bad thing. If, if you do something and you fail at it, I mean, life is all about feeling. Yeah. If nobody failed in this world, then shoot, everybody would be on the same level. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's how, that's how I look at things. Like, you know, just, just everything's not meant for you. Find out what you, what you're really good at and, and, and go for it. Yeah. Put your all into it. Everybody has some type of talent in this world. Like, yeah. there's nobody that's on this planet that don't have something that they're really good at. Yeah. And so that's, it's your job to find what you're really good at and to elevate that. Yeah. I uh, I fell out with, with, with this, uh, a friend of mine. I would call him a friend of mine over some bread. I used to live at the same apartment complex with him. And I told, I told kids the other day, when I passed the state exam, that I was going to text him and be like, I appreciate the recommendation for you putting it in my ear to, to try real estate. Thank you. And if we never cross paths again, I appreciate you just putting that nugget in my ear. But to you, what are, what are the top three things that a realtor or somebody who dives into real estate has to possess to be successful in it? You got to possess drive is for one. Like if you're not steady with this, you're not constantly trying to look for deals. You're not constantly trying to like market yourself and talk to people. You're not going to go anywhere. And then another thing, uh, number two, I guess, would be, it's been, I always say this, you can't count your money before you get it. Mm. Meaning, you may have a deal, right? You can even have a contract on something, right? Or a home or whatever the case may be. You may have a contract on it or whatever, and you've already been like, oh, you know, I'm fixing to make this, 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 and that type money off of this. And you're already thinking in your head what you're going to spend the money on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I found myself guilty of that too. 
You know, just like, oh, okay, this money's about to come in. Oh, I want this. I want that. I want to buy these new shit. I want you know, mm-hmm. you know how it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like later on, like something will happen. Like who knows? Like okay, then they have the proper funding or, you know, whatever the case may be, and your deals is off. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So all that money you was thinking about that you was gonna have and that you was gonna spend maybe at the club. Who knows? Yeah, it's not there no more. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you can be real. That can put you in a place to where you're real, like, discouraged. and You don't want to do this anymore. Okay. You know what I mean? And you feel like people are wasting your time. Yeah. But you just got to keep going with it because you're going to take those. You know what I mean? It's gonna, you're going to take those. You just you just have to find out. You have to find a way to avoid those. Yeah. You know what I mean? So a mistake can actually help you in a lot of ways. Yeah. You know? It, yeah. To me, anything... Anything that that's a, a, a bad experience or or you know maybe a mistake to me is is a learning experience. Yeah, you can take that and you can be like, okay, well, maybe I should do it this way or maybe I shouldn't do that. So the next time when a situation like this arises, you know exactly how to tackle it and exactly what you need to do to avoid any any you know any um, mishaps mishaps with the situation. Yeah. So that's how I look at it. Yeah. Um. Before we close, man, what else, man? Give us another gem or two, man. How you been? What's going on, man? Man, I've been good, man. I can't complain, you know. Yeah. I just moved. I'm in, you know. I'm in, town. I'm in the city, in the city, <laughs> city. <laughs> yeah, boy can hop out, hop out the crib and get on the train in the city, city. <laughs> so, I mean, just adjusting to that. Um, and then, like I said, with the corona going on right now with this pandemic i feel like a lot of people are looking at it oh it's you know we can't go nowhere we can't do this we can't do mm-hmm. that but don i mean you got to take every negative and try to find the positive out of it like because this whole situation right now it, it, it's allowing people to have time with their family for one facts and then have you know time to dedicate to maybe a, a goal that they had or maybe you know something that they've always thought about doing it, it allows you that time to go ahead and start that yeah. you know what i mean like yeah. there's always going to be a way to to make money no matter you know what the situation is i remember something like this i mean not the exact same thing but i remember 2008 mm, hurricane harvey no 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 8 i'm sorry Two, said, no 2008 was hurricane when, ike was in what well, I mean, that probably happened too, but yeah. I'm looking at the standpoint of when the, the market crashed. Mm. You know what I mean? Real estate when, market. When the real estate market yeah, crashed. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're giving out bad loans and all that kind of stuff to where people couldn't pay back. So the whole housing market was just messed up or whatever mm. the case may be. And, and, you know, a whole lot of people had to readjust and, and figure out what they're going to do because, you know, things weren't weren't looking favorable. And I was part of that too because in 2008, I had an internship with a uh, custom home building um, company. And uh, at the time, of course, like I said, 2008 was going on and stuff like that. The market crashed and stuff like that. Shoot, they let me go. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Quick. You know what I mean? Because, of course, I'm an intern and stuff like that. And, you know, we're bottom. Interns are like bottom of the barrel when it comes to, like, stuff like that. So, you know, I was let go. And at, at that point, I wasn't in – you know, construction. I graduated from U of H with construction management technology Go Cougs. degree. Go Cougs. So I was like, man, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And then I found my way in um, oil and gas. Worked for oil and gas project management for probably like eight years. And that's when I transitioned to real estate. So you just got to know. I would say there's always a way of making money. Period. Yeah. Like no matter what the situation is. You know, you just got to find, you just got to find how you're going to get it. And then you got to put in the time to educate yourself, you know, to go out there and to do what's necessary in order for you to, you know, to, to obtain some, some type of income. No doubt. No doubt. Really quickly, the Western Conference playoffs, the playoffs start on Monday. Who you got coming out the West? Uh, man. Let's go first round. First round. So uh, the, I'm gonna be the Trailblazers beat beat Memphis today, so they're playing the Lakers. I'm gonna be honest, like I like basketball, yeah, but football is really my thing, yeah. right? <laughs> so I look at basketball here and there and stuff like that, and then I've been really focused now. Like I don't even do I even have cable TV? I don't even know if I have cable. <laughs> but anyways, I haven't Facts. been watching. My point is I haven't been watching the games, but I would who I want to see. 
of course, I want to see the Lakers. Okay. I want to see LeBron. Okay. I want to see LeBron win one. Well, just just one, to, another one, really. Just to, just to inform you, the Lakers are playing the Trailblazers starting Monday. Oh, that's sweet. And uh, who the the Lakers getting swept? Oh, no. <laughs> nah, it's not gonna be a sweep. I, I, I'll say, I would say what? It's going to seven. Nah, it's definitely not going to seven. <laughs> I, I, I'll get four two. Okay, okay, maybe four one. Listen, Gentlemen by the sweep. time people see this episode, that series would have been over. Because really? that quick? Yeah, that series okay. would have been over. So it's but, gonna be a sweep. No, I'm saying that this episode is dropping. Uh, the last, let me see. This episode is gonna drop on um. Uh, the twenty fifth. So you saying even if they go seven games, well, it might not. It might not be. I don't know. I mean, it might not. It's going to drop on the twenty fifth. So we might be around the. Uh, I think it's going seven. And I think, you think I, that series is going seven. How? Yeah. There's no way. Listen, I'll say Mello, four two. I see. It's, listen, Melo. Look, they got the port. The Trailblazers got some people, man. Bro, Melo. Melo's good. Don't get it. He still got it. Yeah. But he's not no. You know what I mean. First option. He, he, not, he carrying, don't have to be. He's not carrying the team. He 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 don't have to carry the team. But if he come and he drop twenty points, does he even start? He starts. He starts. Okay. Oh, he starts. Look, listen, man. Listen. This guy's always been a a, a mellow fan. He always said Melo was better than LeBron. Now look. <laughs> it's hard to argue that now. It's hard to argue that now. No, but Melo, Melo, look, Melo's a great player and stuff like that. He still got it. I never thought he didn't have it anymore. Mm-hmm. But. He's not carrying a team anymore. He ain't got to carry a team. Who he was carrying carry the team? It. Dame uh, and CJ Mc, the two Lillard? stars. Yeah, they Lillard. they they gonna carry the team, and then Melo gonna quietly come in there 20, 22 points Look, a man. game. Listen, if Melo dropped twenty two points a game, and the Lakers ain't got a third option to give them 15, 16, 17, 18 points a game consistently, it's gonna be tough, man. Yeah, I'm just be honest with know, you. Man. It's gonna be tough. I think LeBron and and AD is just too much. That's not enough. It ain't. It's enough. enough for the Blazers to me. No, it ain't. Then you ain't. Look, you said it yourself. You ain't seen the Blazers play. They got. They got I, pieces. No, no, no. I've seen like the highlights and all that other stuff. Like man, I always watch listen, sports. Man. And that's always gonna be. Yeah, I, I feel I you. But listen, oh, no doubt. Listen. Most importantly, the last question I'll ask you is: What's next? What's next? Uh, it, is is really getting into the the investment space? Okay. Uh, that that is one thing that I want to uh, to really get into. Um, I tried, um, I want to say like last year, but I wasn't really like I had, I was pulled in different directions. I wouldn't say last year, probably like two years. I pulled in different directions, and I really couldn't focus in on the, on the way that I wanted to. So I want to say that is something for sure um, that I want to I want to make happen. Uh, I wanted to dive into the uh, commercial space as well. Um, and, and and what else? What else do I want to do? Those are well. Those are the two the two big things that I'm I'm looking forward to. And then, no doubt. Hopefully, I have like you know I don't want to speak too much on it, but I have stuff going on with uh with some developers and stuff yeah. like that that um that I, I definitely want to work with like a situation to where I'm able to list properties and stuff like that with a developer. So I want to make that connection happen. And then, you know, I got other stuff I got going on. So it's it, real estate is great. Yeah. But I'm the type of person that I want my hand in different things. Yeah, chameleon. So that's what I do. So yeah, those chameleon. are the those are the main three things that I that I'm I'm looking to, to get into in the future. Okay. Listen, man, uh it's been long overdue, man. Um I got you uh I spent a couple of hours making sure the dimensions were right. <laughs> Had to go right. and get the right, had to go and get the right T-shirts. You could have just gave me a medium or large. <laughs> I got you, man, an exclusive SVI T-shirt, man, that I give to every creative that okay. comes on, and the new addition uh, that I have this year, the What's Next podcast T-shirt, an exclusive to all the creators okay. to come on the podcast, man. I'll get two of them. Two I appreciate, uh, I appreciate it being the right moment to have this podcast with you, man. I appreciate um, you, my brother, still with me in my wedding. <laughs> Listen, man, uh, you already know what time it is. I want to say happy birthday to my homegirl, Jayla Jenkins, the big 21 this year. I want to say happy birthday to my man, Manuel Lugo. And Addie has a birthday tomorrow as well. Um, we need justice for Breonna Taylor. What's next podcast is here and in support of that. Got my man Mike here with me. 
My name is John Ross Dyke the first. Houston, Texas, I do what I do for myself to prove I can do it for others. Peace and blessings. Fuck is up. Yeah.